the queen of mid-morning, Dana Perino, filling in for the king of late night, Greg Gutfeld, who's out recovering from being Greg Gutfeld. Yeah. <laughs> but I've come a long way since my days as a humble prison guard. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to address all the moms and dads out there, or anyone who hopes to be one someday. So your children, and Percy, they're counting on you. Isn't he? I mean, <laughs> he's so cute. American kids are in real trouble, and I'm not just talking about Hunter Biden. <laughs> and it's something parents need to deal with ASAP. And it's not that they're staying up late to watch The Gutfeld Show, although that could stunt their growth. <laughs> Look at Greg. A lot of people don't realize he was 6'3 when he started this show. <laughs> but it's our schools. American schools are failing us. They're failing our kids, our families, and our nation. In a recent interview on my show, America's Newsroom, that's weekdays at 9 to 10, and, or 11, I shortchanged myself an hour, former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, whose own story personifies what good education can do, called it a national humiliation. And for once, she wasn't talking about Kill Me's haircut. <laughs> what she meant was that if we keep going as we are, the great American experiment could fail. Historically, America's education system has been one of the shining lights of our country. For over 150 years, people would crawl over glass to get their kids into American schools. And it continues, except today they're crawling through the gaps in the border wall. So is that still the case? Let's look at the national report card. Reading and math are down for eighth graders, four and nine percent respectively. The numbers for history and science, they are just as bad. Add that to chronic absenteeism, which is defined as missing 10 percent of school or more. In Baltimore, for example, chronic absenteeism was at 23 percent in 2016, 36 percent in 2020. Last year, it was 58 percent. 58 percent, or as Baltimore teachers call it, Almost half. Fifty-eight <laughs> percent. I mean, Harold Ford has a better attendance record than that. <laughs> Same with Joe Biden, and everyone's noticed it. Okay, everybody, we need to go back. And so, as the system deteriorates, the Dems do what they do best. They print money. It's like a bootleg monopoly game. Now when you pass go and collect 200 bucks, it's only worth 150. They're now actually demanding free community college. So free college when kids aren't even showing up for grammar school. And then after community college, we're supposed to pay the student loans of all these kids who majored in advanced activism. They're the ones blocking workers on roads, ordering $18 lattes twice a day, and then they complain they can't make a decent wage in today's job market. So parents, I'm talking to you now. This has to stop. We can't afford it monetarily and competitively. How are our kids going to compete with a rising China and India in the future? And please don't say by sitting next to them while taking the test. <laughs> How is the American experiment going to compete with a militaristic and unstable Russia? Right here on our own doorstep in Latin America, these hostile nations are making tremendous inroads. They're coming, folks. And kids who are told there's 55 genders but can't name the 50 states, that's not going to cut it. So what should we do? First, stop the bleeding. Get your kids behind into that school. And I'm sorry for the strong language. <laughs> Get her homework done. And if that school is not teaching what your child needs, demand it. You know, run for a local school board. Demand standards. The left can't keep substituting wokeism and lowered standards for progress and also demand school choice. There are school choice programs sweeping the nation. The American people will do what they can to educate their children, but they need help. And Biden isn't giving it. Remember, he once said that this is the smartest person he knows. <laughs> but schools, that's a local issue. If we fight, we can do this without Washington, without Dr. Jill and her buddy, Randy. This arena is the multicultural, multi-ethnic democracy we need. Why are they making this much money instead of plowing it into lowering gas prices? That is not right. That is not fair. And that is what we are fighting as well. 
And on the right, you can't just say abolish the Department of Education and then get into office and realize that's not going to happen. And then throw up your hands and blame everything on the teachers union as bad as they are. Independence, independence, they don't want the Department of Education abolished. They want education to work better. And without independence, Republicans can't win. So parents, it's time to get tough. This may literally be the most important issue for our nation's future. And like my ex-husband, Eminem, once said, success is our only <laughs> option. <laughs> Tonight's guest, like a toddler in church, he'll leave you rolling in the aisles, comedian Jeff Dye. He's our favorite VP after the oil producer that killed all those seagulls, co-founder of Base Politics, Brad Palumbo. She's like Taco Bell. She's great at first, but has the potential to kill you in your sleep. Fox News <laughs> contributor, Kat Tim. And he retired from the ring, but he'll still wrestle anyone that steals his bling. New York Times best-selling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion, Tyrus. <laughs> Tyrus, can I start with you? It's your show. <laughs> um, <laughs> does that get bleeped? Just kidding. Uh, Tyrus, you're a dad. Yes. You care about education. You're a teacher. Yes. yes. What are we, are we right here? You are a thousand percent right, and unfortunately, it's our fault. We we stopped paying attention to the kids. We're we everyone wants to blame the kids. It's the tablets. It's the the technology. They're not focused. They're doing that, but the parents are doing that. Like who allows the children to do these things? We used to be partners with our teachers, and and yes, I, we see on the media the extreme version of a lot of the school teachers. And used to be like one or two in every school, there was that one teacher, or maybe two. Now, you define the normal teacher, they're the weird ones. The one yeah. that wears the bow tie and wants to teach science is the one that everyone's going, I don't know about that guy. <laughs> so we have to, in some days of parents, we have to start sacrificing. 50% of my kids, that means half, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're homeschooled. And the other two are in private school. So there's no more public school for, for my kids. And there's a lot of sacrifices. But we need to start looking at getting back to the communities, getting together with our neighbors. Maybe we homeschool our neighborhood. And parents all work together and take turns to get back to math, English, history, accurate, you know, best hit that covers those things. Algebra is, is not a gender. It's math. So we need to get back to those things. And it's going to take, because if the kids aren't there, they can't make their money. They can't get their subsidies. So maybe we just don't do business with them anymore and we start doing a grassroots education system. Americans can do it. We just need to pull together. All Bring right. grandmas back. I love the grandmas. Jeff, who, who do you think is to blame for this downfall? I don't know who to blame. They, everyone, everyone's blaming these kids, like Tyler said. Like, oh, they're not showing up for school, and over 56% of the students aren't showing up for school in Baltimore. It's like, yeah, have you seen schools lately? The dude teachers are showing up with prosthetic boobs. The women teachers are talking about uh, teaching them sex stuff. Everything's gay. Everything white is racist. I commend these kids for not showing up. <laughs> Smart kids. Smart kids. Wait, they might have potential. Uh, Brad, at the recent Republican debate just last week, so many of the candidates said they would just eliminate the Department of Education, but a lot of people have said that for a long time. And then they get there and like, realize that that's not going to happen. So that can't be the only solution. No, I mean, I support that in theory, too. But you've got to have more practical solutions. And I'm really glad you brought up school choice, because that's the most obvious one. We can't just keep throwing money at the system. I mean, we spend $15,000 per student. It's 30% more than other developed countries. Clearly, just shoveling more money, which is what Democrats always say, is not going to fix our education crisis. But actually giving parents choice, like maybe the money follows the student and goes to the school that best fits that kid's needs, not just the public school by default, Maybe it's a public school, but maybe it's a private school. Maybe it's a charter school. Maybe it's Tyrus's house. Maybe. <laughs> maybe it's his neighborhood. <laughs> stories. I can fit at least 100 in there. <laughs> and, you, and you could take him over to see all the animals. Listen, back in the day, in a little house of the prairie, it was like there was like 50 kids stuck in a box <laughs> with one teacher. Yeah. And no one lifted their head up. They all did the work. <laughs> so it can be done. Kat, Brad has a good point. There's actually, it's not that we're not spending enough money right. on kids, or maybe we, maybe we are, but we're spending it wrong. But the, in some of these school districts, the more money that you give them, the scores are still as bad. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that school choice, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad we talked about that because they're really the problem with looking for a solution to this is there's no one size fits all solution because I don't have kids, but from my understanding, they are people. So, <laughs> at times. So, and people are different. So, different things, what might work for one kid might not work for another kid. So, we really have to acknowledge that reality. And also, we can't be surprised because even this is, you know, better than it was a few years ago when school was illegal. <laughs> In the pandemic, I mean, the education was no. So, I mean, that's, that's truly insane. And I think that there, there's been all this learning loss that we kind of found out happened and then kind of just went, man, that's a bummer. And, right. and then nothing happened to try to address that. That was just having kids stay at home is going to impact them and has impacted them. So what are we going to do to try to solve that? Should at least kind of try. I don't know. I, I crazy? also did some homework. Yep. And sure, spelling and math is down. But according to my measurements, Podcast listening is up 98 points. <laughs> Only fans is up 99 points. And kids transitioning is up 100 percent. I mean, that's like that's higher than three years that's ago. That's nearly complete. Yes. Yeah, so what's everyone paranoid about? This is fine. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.